Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's great to, good to welcome you here and good to be here with everybody as well. Um, we've got a special guest star today. Um, Grace is going to be preaching for us as we, as we come, to, oh, well, we're roughly in the middle of our Talking Jesus course now. Um, this, um, our life groups are looking at, and we're looking at it in church too, about how we communicate our faith to other people, how we can express ourselves as we're trying to um, tell other people uh, what our faith might mean to us and talk about Jesus. Um, before we begin, uh, just a couple of notices. Firstly, Linda said that, um, uh, asked me to remind you about the Autumn Fair, November the 5th. This is really to say, if anybody's got any donations, uh, then please give them to Linda. Where are you, Linda? There you go, Linda's waving over there. And if you want to know any more about how to do that, then uh, talk to Linda afterwards. Chris. Just in case you weren't here last Sunday, I've been in communication with Love in a Box um, um, team, and this year they're not doing the boxes. We are not doing the boxes. Because most of the boxes go to Moldova and Ukraine, and because of the war, it's hard to distribute them. But instead, they ask for donations. So when you, if you do do a box, when you think what you put in the box, then we usually give a donation towards um, delivering them. Perhaps you would feel that you could give a little donation, which can be handed in to either me or the church office. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And finally, it's my great pleasure to publish the Bands of Marriage. I published the Bands of Marriage between Joshua Benjamin Butt and Harriet Emily Toms. Both single, Joshua of the parish of Pencilwood and Harriet from the parish of Wincanton. This is for the second time of asking. If anybody knows any reason in law why these two people should not be married, you are to declare it now. Shall we pray for them? Lord Jesus, we pray for Joshua and for Harriet as they prepare to be married. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, give them peace as they prepare in their married life together. And Lord, we pray for all married couples. We'll give them peace and strengthen their union in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So turning to our service sheets. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help. Sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Jesus to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. We're going to stand now as we sing our first hymn, O Worship the Lord, 552 in your books.
Amen. Please do take your seats. And have our time of confession now. So if you maybe just spend a few moments in silence now as we come before our God and we, he knows already what we need to confess, but let's be honest before him now and open our hearts to him. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you will forgive all those who truly repent, pardon and deliver them from all their sins, keep us in life eternal. For the night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. In a moment, the choir are going to sing, um, sing a piece for us called There is a Balm in Gilead. And they're not? It's not that one. He will, he's not yet. Oh, well, I'll tell you about that one later in that case. <laughs> we live and learn, or if it's you. Our reading this morning is from the first letter of Peter, <coughs> chapter 3, beginning at verse 8. Suffering for doing good. Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. 
be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for, for doing good than for doing evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Chris. So Grace is going to come and speak to us now. Now, I don't know whether you're aware that uh, Grace is, uh, well, I was about to say Grace is about to leave us. You've left, haven't you? Yes. Grace, Grace is no longer our family worker, but you're still here. I never was your family worker. Oh, okay, right. I've got, not doing very well today. I've got the title wrong. You are our family pioneer lead and all sorts of other stuff. But why, how come you're still here then, Grace? Sorry, it's nice to tease him, isn't it? <laughs> I, like, I like being the target. <laughs> I'm still here because I'm now um, training as an ordinand um, in my first year, training towards perhaps doing something like Steve does, but probably not quite as well as with, Steve With a few mistakes as well. Uh, the, uh, but no, it's, it's, a, it's really great to... Grace has changed her role, really, so rather than uh, working, being part of our family's team and leading the family's team and the, the young people's team, um, you're now an ordinan, rather like Dave, really. So you're with us for another two years or yeah. 18 months. So it's great, so we get to keep that as well. And it's for free. <laughs> <laughs> Even what better. a bargain. What a bargain, eh? Grace, you're a bargain. <laughs> um, but that, that means... Oh. <laughs> for, for this, uh, the mic's so high, nobody can see me. You can adjust the microphone, of course, if you can. Is that, is that better? Good. But that, what that means, of course, is that we don't have or didn't have someone to be working with our families. But we do. Uh, Joe is over here. You've probably met Joe before uh, behind the counter. She, and so Joe's going to wave to you now. Uh, Joe is now our families and uh, young, young, well. Children and families lead. Children, children and young families lead. Thanks. I knew that. Um, <laughs> And so, Joe, it's great to welcome you here, and you've been with us for a long time as a, as a volunteer, but it's now kind of working with us, so it's great. So, a few changes, but in many ways, um, well, it's great to, you're still here, and you're about to Thank preach you. for us. Can I pray for you? Yes, please. Yeah. Well, Jesus, I want to pray now for Grace. I pray you'll bless her and anoint her, Lord, and inspire her as she speaks to us. Open our hearts to hear her words, and may her words be your words. Thank you. I've asked Niall to put the, the verse that we're focusing on on the side screen so you can see them. And um, it does feel like a bit of a gift when the verse that we are looking at this morning kind of just says it all. So oh, we still need to move the microphone because I'm a bit echoey and boomy, I think. If only the Lord would have given me an inch more, I'd be able to reach the top shelves in Audi and be able <laughs> to be seen at the front of church. I love this. No, it's fine. But what's great about this verse is that it does what it says on the tin. I don't really need to say very much, not really, because it's all there, isn't it? Worship Christ as the Lord of your life. And if you're asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. So I thought we'd start with that first bit. What does it mean to worship Christ as the Lord of your life? 
And I know some of us here have been Christians for a really long time, but there might be others here who maybe haven't been, or perhaps you're still exploring what does it mean to be a Christian, or what does it mean to have a faith in Christ? Or maybe you've been a Christian for a really long time, but you're going through one of those seasons where you're just thinking, oh, what's it all about, really? And what it's all about is Jesus. It's about Jesus being the lens through which we get to see God and understand God. It's about Jesus being the relationship through whom we get to get close to God and know who God is as our Father, as our loving God. It's about God who made himself man through Jesus so that he could, out of his love and compassion, by the way, but so that he could really know and see what life is like in amongst the dirt and the dust where we are living. And it's about that very same God who in Jesus died on the cross so that that relationship that we so need with him could be possible. So remember it was broken. Do you know what it is to know God? Do you know what it is to have a living faith, a living relationship with him where you go to him and you download and say, what your day has been like and then you pause and you hear from him what how he sees it do you know what it's like to know God like that and it's because Jesus died and he took all of the sin and the dirt and the mess and the hurt and the sickness and the pain of this world and he took it down into the grave and then rose from it into glory it's because of that that we're even here this morning that's why Christians gather, isn't it? That's why we come together to worship and to praise. And isn't it awesome that that very same Jesus now sits at the right hand of the Father? There is one in heaven who knows what it's like to be human, and so he can pray on our behalf, intercede for us as we pray. He gathers up our prayers and intercedes on our behalf to the Father because he gets it, because he knows because he's walked in our shoes. So let's worship Christ as Lord of our life. And what does that look like? Obviously on a Sunday, it's beautiful. And we just had the most wonderful song. Thank you. Ron and I were sat there cheering you on because it was so beautiful. <laughs> it's great to come into church and to worship God, isn't it? I really love it. And I, do you know what? You probably think, oh, Grace fits in the 11 o'clock category. Well, I don't because you can't put me in a box. Actually, I love it in here as well at 9.15. You see me more often at 11 o'clock because I've got small children. <laughs> but I love it in, in, in both um, styles, and actually I love even a broader spectrum than that. It's not about style or preference. It's about loving to come and worship God. And what a joy that we can do that here in church on a Sunday morning. But how about the rest of the week? <laughs> how does it go? For the rest of the week if you were in the Kanunga house yesterday and I think sometimes it's good as the person at the front to kind of give a bit of reality we had a dreadful day we just woke up wrong just you know by by nine o'clock in the morning the um we've got a lounge diner and the dining room part of it was and this is the words I used to explain it to my parents when they couldn't understand why I was so very cross it was like a ball pool for polystyrene <laughs> they'd managed to get hold of a big box that had a rabbit hutch in it that we'd unpacked and made the rabbit hutch and left all the polystyrene in the box and it was no longer in sheets of polystyrene but in balls of polystyrene all over the floor and I absolutely lost it and the day didn't really get restored <laughs> if I'm honest the day didn't really get restored so when I say, what is it like in the rest of the days of the week? I'm meaning in the mess and the chaos of life. Because life is messy and chaotic. Whether you're dealing with little ones or old ones or anyone in between, life is messy and chaos. And what does that worship look like? Because one of the challenges I've felt as I've prepared for this morning is, it says, if you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Am I asked? That was the challenge. I heard am I asked do people see that I'm different do people see that I'm somehow distinct somehow because I've got Christ because I'm a, a Christian 
do I get asked? So always be prepared to give an answer. And um, we like to think, because we're English and we're reserved, that our faith is private. And it's not. Sorry. It's not private. It's personal. Yes, our faith is very personal. But it's not private. Because we weren't told, come into the kingdom and then keep it to yourself. We were told, come into the kingdom and then go out. Preaching the word of the Lord, baptizing in the name of Jesus. And we weren't just to go into Liscard, were we? We were to go to Jerusalem, Judea, and the rest of the world. It was never meant to be a, a joy and a glory that we kept to ourselves hidden, but it was something to be shared. So do we get asked? And are there times when it's easier to answer or harder to answer? I suspect when we're full of joy, then yeah, it's really easy to say. <laughs> and when we're struggling, because we do struggle, that it's not so easy. But how are we going to do it? This course is called Talking Jesus, isn't it? Um, how are we going to talk Jesus? Well, I think the best way of talking Jesus is to follow Jesus' example of telling stories. So Jesus told stories because people could relate to them, they could understand them. They were set in a culture and a context that they could understand. Now, I'm not saying we should be making up stories. What I'm saying is we should be telling our story. Now, if someone asks you why, you, why do you go to church, for example, I'm not sure we should start up. Well, I became a Christian in 1972. Let's, let's not... I don't mean we're giving our testimony in that way. <laughs> because, you know, the poor person might fall asleep. But what I'm meaning is, unless it's appropriate to do that, but tell something of your story, something of your love of God, something of your experience of your love of God, something of what God has done in your life that's made a difference, made a change. Because we could answer the question, why do you go to church, with, well, I quite like it, I've got a few friends there, the music's not bad. So we could, but uh, is that really going to make people want to come? Is that really going to set someone's heart on fire? But if we answer, well, do you know what? I've experienced Jesus' love, and that's a bit hard to understand if you haven't experienced it, but it's real and it's true, and this happened in my life, and that God was just so close, and it was his closeness, his strength that got me through. That's more like a, a Duff Duff line in EastEnders, isn't it? <laughs> it's about telling our story in a way that people can think, oh, and because it's your story, and this is so important, because it's your story, no one can say that's not true. If you come at them with scripture, you don't know who you're talking to. They may have um, a secular degree in theology, and they might be able to rebuff you back. But if you come with your personal story, and it's amazing how many people, when you talk to them, and you ask them, well, how did you come to faith? There's always somebody else involved. There's always a bigger story as part of it. So last Sunday, the Kanunga family, we weren't here in Liscard. We were in Woodbury, which is a small village outside of Exeter, um, because we're still part of the Church Mission Society. Um, Festo, really, is part of the Church Mission Society, and some of the things he does here at the church is under that kind of banner. So we still have a couple of supporting churches through Church Mission Society. And I know you know all about that kind of thing because you've had people here before. And so we went to do a, an update at that church. Um, I don't like, as a missioner or person in mission, I don't like it when a church invites you to just kind of give an update because I feel like, well, the people didn't come to church to hear about the Kanungas, they came to church to hear about Jesus. So I always try and make sure that it's not, it, you know, there's a bit about us, but it's more about God. It's a, a scale balance, if you like. But these people, we hadn't seen them since 2018, and quite a lot has changed in our lives since 2018. So the last time they saw us, we were living in Tanzania and back in the UK doing some training. And so I had quite a bit of Kanunga story to update them with. And a lot of it was, a, was hard and challenging. A lot of that time wasn't easy for us, as you, you guys know, because you supported us through quite a lot of it. And I didn't really know how this was going to land last Sunday for people. Um, and I, I wasn't given a subject or, or a theme or anything, so I just went off 
Well, I felt like God told me that um, we should think about our faith being on a firm foundation. So I shared that and I shared the, the suffering, really, that we went through for a couple of years and um, just gave it to God, really, to deal with. And all glory to God, because at the end of the service, so many people said, that was so helpful. Just hearing what you went through, just understanding what you went through, but how God sustained you. And a number of us last weekend were here watching the Corrie Ten Boom performance, weren't we? The hiding place. And it was excellent, wasn't it? Just excellent. If you missed it, I'm really sorry that you missed out. Do If you don't know about Corrie Ten Boom, find out about her. Get hold of her book or one of her books. Um, but what's awesome about that story is it was her faith that sustained her. So she was in the concentration camps um, in the Second World War, having been somebody who hid um, Jews in their, in their home. And it was her faith in God that sustained her. And I just wonder if it's our stories about how God has sustained us, about how God has carried us through difficult times, whether it's those stories that have the most impact when someone says, why do you have faith in Jesus? Partly because they're real, but also because they've got a bit of a punch to them, haven't they? Always be ready. So there was a time in my early 20s, I think I may have mentioned this in this church before, so apologies if you've heard me say this before, but I was working in a hotel um, as a waitress, it was while I was at uni, back on holiday, and um, I'd obviously listened to a really good talk that had been really inspiring about sharing your faith, and so I prayed, and just in case you're wondering, prayer works, and if you don't want God to answer, don't pray. If you don't want God to answer, don't pray. Because I prayed, God, would you give me opportunities, please, to share my faith? The whole week that followed, almost day by day, <laughs> I was asked by various people in that hotel, the hotel staff that I worked with, why I went to church, why was I a Christian, and I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. I wasn't prepared. I thought I wanted to do it, I'd asked God for opportunities, and he gave them to me, but I wasn't prepared. So, what's your story going to be? What is your story? You know your story. It's yours. It's different to mine. It's different to the person you're sat next to. What's your story? And are you prepared? Are you ready to share it? Because I think, not that we should rehearse this, but we should think about it. So that when the time comes, when those opportunities come, we know how to answer. And um, just to finish up, just so you know, I have been learning. Because I've been at college now three, four weeks. <laughs> four weeks. So what I learnt was that this passage, um, Peter wrote it at a time when the Christians were being oppressed. Actually, it was the big, probably around the beginnings of that time. And not, it was just before Nero um, was in charge, and Nero became emperor and then killed them all. But it was at the beginning of that time, and they're being oppressed, they're being tortured, and Peter is encouraging them to stay strong in their faith and to still answer that Jesus is Lord when they're asked about what they believe. And there's a story, um, it's a true story, sadly, from the late 1990s. There was a high school shooting in um, Columbine, the Columbine High School shooting, you probably remember it. Um, and it really impacted me, I, I think because I was a similar age, and I read a book called She Said Yes, and it was all about this girl who, um, with a gun pointed to her head as a teenager, was asked, do you believe in Jesus? And she said yes, and she was killed. And that book, gosh, <laughs> even now has an impact, that story of hers, her true story. And thankfully, praise God, in the UK, we're not in that situation, are we? But we don't always have the strength to give the right answer. And what happened during that time of oppression under Nero is that some of the church leaders even denounced their faith because of the torture they were facing. And then later on, a little bit in history, not, not far because they were still alive, um, there was a bit of a question mark about whether they could still lead in the church and it was St. Augustine, who's got to be one of the best saints ever. St. Augustine said, 
God's grace is enough. God's grace is enough. So if you've ever missed an opportunity to speak about Jesus, don't, don't leave here today feeling guilty or beating yourselves up because God's grace is enough. If it was enough for those Christian leaders back then, it's certainly still enough for us today. God's grace is enough. But that's also true when someone asks us and we stumble over an answer. God's grace is enough because it's his voice they hear, not ours. So Father God, I thank you that you make it really clear in your word that we're to share about you, that we're not to keep you to ourselves, but that we're to speak well of you. Father, I do pray for opportunities to share our faith. I do ask, Lord, that we would be seen to be different and distinct and that people would notice and ask us what it's all about. But I thank you that your grace is enough that it doesn't matter if we stumble and trip over our answers. That you, Lord, will make sure that your voice is heard. Amen. Thank you, Grace. I'm going to sing now. Our next hymn is All My Hope on God is Founded, which is number 19 in your books. If you'd like to take your seats now as we um, we'll say the creed together and then we'll go straight into our prayers where we'll just come before God and lay before him the things on our hearts. Let's say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let's gather in prayer, shall we? Lord Jesus, we thank you that your grace is enough, that your power is enough, and that your peace is what we seek. So Lord, we pray for grace now. Let's pray for grace for all those who find grace hard to do, for those who hold bitterness in their hearts, for those who can't forgive, for those who've been wounded, for those who suffer. Let's just be silent now as we, as we remember people we may know in that situation, maybe ourselves. Your grace is always enough. We pray for people on the world stage and on any stage where their decisions affect others. That we pray for grace and peace and that the common good will be on their hearts. And Lord, give them grace if they've got it wrong in the past to admit it and move on. Pray for leaders now. Lord, we pray for our church, this church, and wider church. Lord, as we reach out into our community and tell the story of Jesus, sometimes in our own words, sometimes in your words, we pray that through your grace people will hear. And as we serve, I pray that people will see your face. Lord, we pray for grace for people on our hearts. Let's pray now for people we know in need of prayer, out loud if you wish, or in the silence of your hearts. We pray for Ian. Merciful for Father, we ask that you'll accept our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to stand, please, we're going to share the peace with each other. And we share the peace with each other before communion so we can be in communion with each other before we become in communion with God. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also. Offer a sign of peace. Sit or kneel now, shall we, as we all sit rather, as we're going to pray. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life. That we might live in him and he in us.
On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink his holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And let's pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to share communion together in just a few moments, and during this time, the choir are going to sing us an anthem, which is called There is a Barn in Gilead. Um, I just wanted to read you a, a verse from uh, Genesis 37. As they sat down to eat, and this is Reuben, uh, uh, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Um, that's the verse, the balm and Gilead, where it comes from. Um, but it's also referred to later in the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, as you, if you've ever read him, is not the happiest of chaps, really. And... And he is, um, what he's talking about is Jeremiah, all the way through the book, is there's a big, big problem in the, uh, in, in the, the Jewish nation, really, the Israelite nation, which is they've turned away from God and they're worshipping idols. And, they, and they've, they've forgotten God, they've forgotten justice, and they need something to heal them. That's, they need healing. So the balm in Gilead is uh, it's a healing thing. And it's there to heal us from ourselves, it's to heal us from where we've gone wrong, it's to heal us sometimes from some of the things that have happened in our lives. So when, it, when we sing of there being a balm in Gilead, it's talking about a healing balm, the healing balm of Jesus who comes to us and helps us to heal. Whatever it is, whatever it is that we need to be healed from. So the choir will sing that to us as we, uh, as we share communion together.
Let's pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is O Jesus I Have Promised, which is number 503 in your books. Shall we stand and sing our praises to God? Do please stay for coffee afterwards and join us as we fellowship together in the name of Jesus. But let's pray now as we stand and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God 
which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.